Hello and welcome to another video. I hope that you're all very well. Today we're going to be talking about dual carriageways. Now, before we go on any further, what is a dual carriageway? Well, basically the word dual means two. The word carriageway means road. So, add them together, dual carriageway basically means two roads. So you get one road going in one direction and another road coming in the opposite direction. A dual carriageway is the two roads basically are split usually with a fence or grass verge. They may be separated by a row of trees but whatever it is uh, they are split and they are two completely separate roads. This is regardless of how much lanes it has or how many lanes it has. You can get a dual carriageway with just one lane. So you get one lane going in one direction and another lane coming in the opposite direction. You may find a dual carriageway with two lanes or even three or more lanes. Regardless of the number of lanes it has, if it has a barrier in the middle, it's a dual carriageway. So now that you know what a dual carriageway is, I'm going to go for a little drive and I'm going to demonstrate on how we can join a dual carriageway from a slip road and then drive along and then we will leave the dual carriageway from the slip road again. So, just going to go for a little drive. The dual carriageway that uh, I intend to take is uh, only a few seconds down the road. Now, this is the dual carriageway I'll be taking. I'm going to be turning left uh, at this roundabout onto the dual carriageway. Straight away, I can see a national speed limit sign. Now, the national speed limit on a dual carriageway is 70 miles per hour. Now, when we join a dual carriageway, the first thing we want to do is accelerate. So we accelerate to match the speed of the drivers in front. And then we observe, making sure that we find a safe gap. And once we find a safe gap, we merge onto the carriageway. So once again, the procedure for joining a dual carriageway is firstly to accelerate because if the people are doing 70 miles an hour on the dual carriageway, what you don't want to do is join at let's say 30 miles an hour and force those drivers to slow down. So the first most important thing, we accelerate. The slip road to join a dual carriageway is also known for that reason as the acceleration lane. After we've, after we've accelerated, we need to make the observations. Under no circumstances should you force the other drivers to slow down, swerve or to stop. Some drivers may, as a matter of courtesy, just slow down for you voluntarily or they may change a lane and they may let you in. So once again, we accelerate, we observe and then we emerge. So once we're on the dual carriageway, it's important that we remain in the left hand lane unless we are overtaking or turning right. Now, on a dual carriageway with where you've joined them from a slip road like this, there will be no right turn. 
so the right hand lanes will be for overtaking the middle lane will be for overtaking the traffic on the left hand lane and the right hand lane will be overtaking the traffic in the middle lane so it makes no difference if it is 70 miles an hour and you're driving at 70 miles an hour you should still be in the left hand lane now I'm going to be leaving the dual carriageway here I can see the sign it's um, a third of a mile away now I don't want to be indicating so soon we've got these countdown markers 300 yards for the dual carriageway ideally you want to indicate between the 300 and the 100 yards so we've got the 200 yard sign the 100 yards so I'm going to indicate it's important that we checking mirrors as well just in case you get somebody else in the right hand lane wanting to come across and try to cut you up now that I've left the dual carriageway I want to be aware of the speed limit now I can see the sign saying 30 there so I want to make sure that my speed is 30 before I get to that point when you're leaving a dual carriageway you're basically used to the high speeds and once you get to 30 you could be driving at let's say 50 miles an hour and it may seem as if you're driving at 30 miles an hour because you're used to the high speeds now I'm going to go back onto the dual carriageway now here I haven't seen any speed sign so I'm going to assume it's still 30 so it's 30 miles an hour until I get to the national speed limit sign so now I'm going to accelerate observe and I can see this vehicle coming the van is past me and I'm going to move and check my blind spot here the blind spot is very important because you can get sometimes traffic in the right hand lane moving into the same lane that you want to move into it's also important that you keep a distance away from the driver in front you want to be at least a gap of two seconds we use the two second rule so when the van driver in front passes that exit sign I'm going to start counting it's just past it now one second two seconds three seconds four seconds so I'm actually twice the distance I've got twice the normal gap there this gap that I've got now will be a great gap in the wet weather because we leave a two second gap when driving on dual carriageways it's important that we watch all the signs now there's an exit sign here I'm not going to come off the dual carriageway on this exit but it's still important to be aware of these signs because firstly you can get somebody let's say in the middle lane who decides that he needs to leave the exit and will come cutting across me so I need to be aware of the traffic on my right the other thing is when there's an exit there will usually be an entrance so if there is an entrance then I need to be aware of it as I may need to adjust my speed to allow, to allow other drivers in so I'm just waiting for this uh, entrance Looks like we've got another exit sign 
in uh, half a mile and here's the entrance now I'm going to be taking the next exit but I'm also looking at the entrance here making sure that there's no one coming in if there is as I said I may need to adjust my speed to allow them in or even sometimes change my lane so I'm going to be leaving the dual carriageway here now I haven't slowed down at all the reason I haven't slowed down is because I'm going to do the slowing down on the slip road this is known as the deacceleration lane 30 miles an hour checking mirrors and the speed now this speed seems very very slow it's not slow it just seems slow the reason it seems slow is because I've got used to the high speed I'm going to go one more time around the roundabout and back onto the dual carriageway so I'm on the acceleration lane the slip road and I've already started to look across there seems to be a gap but one of these people could be changing so I've looked and I've made sure that it's safe so I've got an exit here checking my side mirror making sure no one's going to be trying to cut me up I've passed the exit and now I'm ready for the entrance I can see the entrance in the distance what I am going to do I'm going to change lane but I can see that there's someone behind me coming up so I've just eased off the gas slightly to let him pass recheck my mirrors signal and just quick check over my shoulder and moved into the middle lane that shoulder check is just your chin to your shoulder so all you want to be doing is just that now this is the overtaking lane as I said so at the first safe opportunity I do want to move back into my left hand lane so I'm going to overtake this vehicle and the lorry driver and then move back in when I move back in it's important that I do not force this person to slow down that I don't cut him up basically so the way to ensure that is to make sure that I look in my center mirror and I should be able to see him fully and also the road ahead so I can see that and I've moved in and I haven't made him slow down at all so once again I'm going to be leaving the dual carriageway it's a third of a mile change of speed so check my all my mirrors and just eased off slightly of the accelerator signaled my intention of leaving the carriageway and I'm not slowing down I am not slowing down 
once I'm on the slip road, once I'm on the deacceleration lane, that is when I do the slowing down. Get my speed down. And it's at 30 miles an hour. Again, it feels very slow. I'm back on the dual carriageway. This is the last time we're doing this dual carriageway, by the way. <laughs> so I've accelerated. Looking for a safe gap. It all seems clear. Chin to shoulder and it's safe to merge. What you don't want to do on a dual carriageway is to overtake anybody on the left. So at the moment, my speed is 50 miles an hour. If I do want to overtake this person, I need to move into the far right hand lane. So I'm going to attempt that. In fact, I'm going to let this vehicle pass me first. I've indicated looked over my shoulder slightly and I've eased off the accelerator so I'm creating a gap away from the person in front and I'm going to let the van driver pass me on my right before I indicate again let the van driver go in front and change lane now I'm keeping that gap away from the driver in front I'm also aware that the van driver behind me is extremely close. So because he's very close to me, what I don't want to do is try to accelerate and get away from him because if I do that, he's only going to get closer. The best thing to do in that circumstance is just to ease off the gas so I've got more of a space, more of a gap against the person ahead and I'm going to move back to my left now make him happy he can overtake me as I was saying if you are tailgated in other words someone is very close to you like he was you want to make sure that you've got a bigger gap away from the person in front so that if you do have to brake then you've got more space and you can brake lighter rather than braking suddenly all at once. Now I'm going to carry on on the dual carriageway a little bit further so I'm not coming off at this exit. So because of that information, because I know I'm not coming off, then I can overtake these vehicles if I want to do so but I'm not going to because the exit I'll be taking is not very far from here so we've just passed an exit so I should be aware now of an entrance coming up. This sign is telling me that the entrance is in another 250 yards, which is not far at all. I can see, I've just started braking slightly because of the roadworks. Uh, the van driver, this little van driver, had a choice of either coming in suddenly in front of me or, or stopping. So it made more sense for me to just ease off and let him in rather than uh, risk any form of collision. It's always better to be on the safer side in these situations.
Now, the dual carriageways that we've done, they all had slip roads. And uh, we joined the dual carriageway from the slip road. In other words, the acceleration lane. And we left the dual carriageway from the slip road. In other words, the D acceleration lane. However, not all dual carriageways will have a slip road. Some dual carriageways will have just a roundabout. So when you're joining, you'll be joining from a roundabout. And when you're leaving the dual carriageway, again, you'll be leaving from a roundabout. You also get dual carriageways mainly in, um, in towns, in urban roads, where there's no roundabout, no dual carriageway, sorry, no roundabout, no slip road, but just a normal road. Now, I'm going to be turning left on, at the next roundabout onto a dual carriageway. So there's no slip road here, no nothing, just give way to traffic on the right and straight away within a second I'm on the dual carriageway. Now this this dual carriageway has two lanes, but it's still a dual carriageway. The previous dual carriageway we were on had three lanes. So here I joined the dual carriageway from a slip road. No, I did not join from a slip road. I, I joined from a roundabout. And it looks like I'm going to be leaving the dual carriageway from a roundabout again. just keeping my distance away from this person here at the moment now this sign means two-way road so the dual carriageway is now finished there's still two lanes but there's no barrier in the middle if there was a barrier on this road here so if they put a fence along this road then this would become a dual carriageway well that's the end of the video i really hope that you've uh, you've benefited from this if you have and you're not a subscriber then please do subscribe to the channel for other videos um, have the bell notification on so you will not miss any opportunity of watching our videos thank you for watching take care bye bye